and welcome to Big Fish Kids Club this week. Unfortunately, Becky is still not feeling too well, so it's just me and Elisha again. And we've got more bad news for you, unfortunately. This is going to be our last Big Fish Kids Club before the summer. We're going to have a break through the summer, but in September, we're going to have a look to see if we're able to meet physically and do Big Fish Kids Club in person again. Hello. But uh, we'll do it in person again in the churches where we normally do it. But if not, then we'll continue online on Facebook and YouTube for you to enjoy Kids Club whilst you're still not able to get out as much as possible. Um, but even though Becky's not here, we decided we would do a big, full, big fish for you. So there's going to be some craft at the end, which is going to be me. So it could go horribly wrong, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but we thought we'd start off with our favourite game as well, Animal Karate. So Elisha, are you going to come and help me with Animal Karate? Come on. You want that, do you? Okay, right, grab that, I'm back over here, and then you can help me with Animal Karate. So, hopefully you should know how it works by now, but if you're new joining us for Big Fish, then we'll let you know how it works. So the way it works is this. In a moment, I'm going to say, Animal Karate Kids, do your thing. And you've got three things to choose from. You rolled the piece of string down. Okay, you're going to help me with these actions, okay? So the first one is a giraffe. I'll let you do a giraffe. Then we've got a crocodile. You do a crocodile. Stamp, stamp, stamp. And then we've got a penguin. Who's a waddle like a penguin. So when I say animal karate, kids do a thing. You choose one of those. Either the giraffe, the crocodile, or the penguin. And then you've got to stay with what you've got. Then I'll say animal karate expert do your thing. And I'll go, hi And I'll pick one of those. Now if I pick the same one as you, then you're out. you just got to sit down for a moment. But if not, then you're still in and you get to go through to our next round. We're going to play three rounds, so don't worry. If you're out in the first round, it won't take long before we'll be continuing on to our next thing as well. Throw it to there, is it? You want your string back to you? Here you go, here's your string back. You have your string back? There we go. Okay, right, so, Animal Karate Kids, do your thing. hi -ya! So remember, you're choosing between the giraffe, the crocodile, or the penguin. So choose carefully. Okay, stick what you got. So, Animal Karate Expert, do your thing. hi -ya! It's a crocodile. So if you've got a crocodile, then you're going to be out. Sit down a minute. But if not, you're through to round two. So, round two, here we go. Animal Karate Kids, do your thing. hi -ya! So remember, you're choosing the giraffe, the crocodile, or the penguin. Choose quickly. Stick with what you've got. Okay, so here we go. Animal Karate Expert, do your thing. hi -ya! Or crocodile again. Oh, you might have chosen the crocodile thinking I wasn't going to choose it after I chose it the first time. But if you had a crocodile, you're out. But if you were a giraffe or a penguin, you're still in and through to our final round. So here we go. Final round. You ready? Animal Karate Kids, do your thing. hi -ya! Which one are you going to choose? The giraffe, the crocodile or the penguin? Choose carefully. Here we go. Last time. Animal Karate Expert, do your thing. hi -ya! It's a penguin. So if you had a penguin, then you're going to be out. But if you had the giraffe or the crocodile, you are one of our winners this week. Give yourselves a big clap. Yay! Yay! Um, and let us know. And um, we'll sort of send you a congratulations as well for being one of our winners. Now, as you said, we're going to have craft and we're going to have a story and we're going to have our memory verse as normal. So if you didn't see our post about the craft on Tuesday, these are the things you're going to need. You're going to need a piece of card. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need some coloring pens or pencils. You're going to need some string, some glue and some sellotape and a hole punch. That's right. I was trying to remember all the different things. So hopefully you've got all those. If you haven't, then you can get them together whilst we do the song and the things like that ready to join us for the craft later on. But now we're going to um, be singing a song. So even though Becky's not here, obviously she's recorded some of the songs beforehand. So we're going to sing one of uh, Becky's favourite songs. We're going to sing all through history. So sing as loud as you can, do the best actions you can, and we'll see you back in a minute. and animals afloat The Lord was good The Lord was strong And Noah lived his life for him Moses led his people through the sea Taking them away from slavery The Lord was good The Lord was strong And Moses lived his life for him He won a 
became a king. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and David lived his life for him. Daniel was inside a lion's den. God brought him to safety once again. The Lord was It's me again. Luke's still unwell, so you've got me. But I love this story. This week's story is amazing, yeah! Because this week's story shows that Jesus didn't just come for good people, but he came for bad people. People who knew they'd messed up, knew they'd done wrong, but he loved them anyway and wanted them to follow him. Well, the name of Jesus this week is one we looked at earlier with Luke. It's called Son of Man. And it shows that Jesus wasn't just God and wasn't just a man, but was both. And so being called Son of Man showed that he was both. Well, Enjoy the story, look out for the name of Jesus, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! I love today's story because it shows us that Jesus didn't just come to this earth to save people who are good and kind. It's nice to be good and kind, but actually, we need to realize that all of us sometimes do things that are wrong and actually that doesn't stop us from being part of God's family. In fact, as you'll see in the story, Jesus says that that is exactly why he came to save us, people who do things that are wrong. But let's have a look at today's story, shall we? Now, some of the pictures in today's story might not look quite how they did at the time of Jesus. They've been updated a bit to make it look a bit easier for you to understand some of the things that are going Let's have a look. Here is Big Zack. Wow, look at him, he's throwing money around. Doesn't he look like a generous, kind and happy person? Everyone looks like they wanna be his friend, but that wasn't how it always was for Big Zack of Jericho. You see, Zacky, Zack's name was actually Zacchaeus. It was quite a long name, so you don't hear it that often nowadays, but he was called Zacchaeus. And well, we don't know whether Zacchaeus really went to school in the same way we do, but if we did, his school picture would probably have looked a little bit like this. Can you spot Big Zack there? That's right, there he is, right down at the front. You can spot him because, well, actually, he's so small compared to everyone else. You see, that was Zacchaeus's problem. The Bible tells us that Zacchaeus was quite short. And I wonder whether 
as might happen to you if you're a bit short as well, perhaps people pick on you. It's not nice when people pick on you, is it? But often people will try and pick on anything they can to pick on you or make fun of you. And I wonder whether back at school people would have said, ha ha, shorty, shorty, Zacchaeus is a shorty, or something like that, which isn't a nice thing to say at all. It's a really horrible thing. And it would have made Zacchaeus feel really, really, well, sad. But because of what happened to Zacchaeus when he grew up, I wonder whether it didn't just make Zacchaeus sad, but... I wonder whether it also made Zacchaeus feel a little bit mad and eventually Zacchaeus decided that he was going to get even. You see, Zacchaeus didn't have any friends and so I wonder whether Zac, big Zac Zacchaeus, decided, well, if I don't have any friends anyway, then I might as well grow up to do a job where the person who does that job doesn't have any friends. Because if I don't have friends anyway, then I might as well do a job like that because even if I haven't got lots of friends, I can at least have lots and lots of money. You see, the Bible tells us that Big Zack grew up to be a tax collector. Now, tax collectors aren't bad people, but they were back in Zacchaeus' time. You see, tax collectors in Zacchaeus' time were very, very greedy. You see, they had to collect money for the king, but they wouldn't just collect money for the king. They would say, OK, I'll take one for the king and two for me. I'll take one for the king and three for me. They would always take more than what they were meant to take. They were essentially robbing the people that they were collecting the taxes from. And that made everyone else sad. And it meant that tax collectors didn't have any friends. But Zacchaeus didn't care because he didn't have any friends anyway. And so actually he was quite happy because he was rich and everyone else had to pay him money that they owed to the king. You see, Zacchaeus had a bit of a problem, a problem which I call eye disease. Not these kind of eyes, but this kind of eye, a great big letter I, right on his heart. You see, Zacchaeus would see things and he would say, I want that and I want it now. And he would just take whatever he wanted. And sometimes we're a bit like that, aren't we? It might not be that we just take things that we want, but actually it, it, that eye disease is the same when we just do what we want to do rather than what God wants us to do. And actually it causes a great big problem because it stops us from getting to know God. It stops us from being part of his family and it stops us from one day getting to be with him forever. And I wonder whether that started to play at Zacchaeus because you see he realised he didn't have any friends here, but I wonder whether he also realised that he wasn't going to get to be with God forever and so wouldn't have any friends after this life either. I wonder whether that's why this one day he decided to head out to see the person who was visiting his town. You see there was a lot of excitement in his town. Everyone was so excited because Jesus was coming to town. So Zacchaeus headed out to the middle of town to go and see Jesus just like everyone else but there was a problem. You see Zacchaeus, we said isn't it, was really really short and well, everyone else was really big and so he couldn't see through the crowd. He might have tried to jump up and down, perhaps, perhaps he tried to ease his way around, try to squeeze through people, but because nobody liked Big Zack, they weren't going to let him through. So what was he going to do? He really, really wanted to see Jesus. He knew that Jesus could change his entire life. And he wanted to see him. He was so, so desperate. So he did something that no man would ever do back in those days. He actually went and he climbed up a tree. I wonder whether those same people that had made fun of him before made fun of him now. Ah, shorty, shorty, Zacchaeus is a shorty. Look at him. He's got to climb up that tree by there. They didn't like him at all because of the things he'd done that are wrong. But Zacchaeus was happy because he was up the tree and he could see Jesus. And he was watching as Jesus got closer and closer and closer and closer. You see, Jesus seemed to be coming right up to the sycamore tree where Zacchaeus was sat. Why was Jesus coming to the tree where he was? He wanted to see Jesus, but he wasn't so sure whether he wanted Jesus to see him because of all the things he'd done that were wrong. But Jesus came right up to the tree. He looked up at Big Zac and he said, Zacchaeus, come down out of the tree. I want to go to your house to have some tea. 
Zacchaeus couldn't believe it. He was so, so happy. No one ever wanted to be his friend. No one ever wanted to know him. But Jesus did. You see, even though Jesus knew that Zacchaeus had done things that are wrong, Jesus still wanted Zacchaeus to know him and to be his friend. Zacchaeus jumped straight down out of the tree, and all the other people were probably standing there a bit like, why has Jesus chosen him and not us? Well, we're good people, we do good things. Why has Jesus chosen big Zac who does things that are wrong? But then they saw something had changed within Zacchaeus. The greedy Zacchaeus, who they'd always known, the tax collector who always took all of their money and stole from them, suddenly turned round and he said something very different. And it was all because he'd come to know Jesus. You see, Zacchaeus turned round and he said to the people, if I've ever stolen from anybody, I'm going to give them four times more back. And I'm going to give half of my money to the poor. Ah, the people would have thought, what on earth is going on here? But you see, it was all because he'd come to know Jesus. Because you see, Jesus, just a little while after this, was actually going to go and die on, well, a cross. And he was going to die for all of the things that Big Zach had ever done that was wrong. But not just the things that Big Zach had done that were wrong, but all the things that you and I have done that are wrong, so that anybody could turn to him and say they were sorry and be forgiven. You see, that eye disease I talked about stops us from getting to know God, but Jesus took that upon himself on the cross, is what the Bible calls sin, so that we could be forgiven. You see, we might not do things as bad as Zacchaeus, but we all do things that are wrong, don't we? And we all need to be forgiven. And that can only happen by putting our trust in Jesus, by saying we're sorry for the things we've done, putting our trust in him. And then he says we can be part of his family and one day get to be with him forever. The crowd looked at Zacchaeus, looked at all that was going on, and they were really confused. But then Jesus said, salvation has come to this house. Zacchaeus is now part of my family forevermore. And the people were probably still a bit confused. And so Jesus said the name that we're talking about today. He used it for himself. He said, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. You see, Jesus was telling them that he came for people like Zacchaeus, people who know that they've done things that are wrong, rather than those who just think that they've been good all the time, but actually have still been doing things that are wrong. Jesus said Zacchaeus, you know, he was saying to them, look, Zacchaeus knows that he's done things that are wrong, but actually he also knows that he's been forgiven. Zacchaeus then was so happy, he took Jesus back to his house, and I'm sure he threw a great big party because he was so, so happy because now he knew Jesus. And it's that line that Jesus said, isn't it? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. See, what Jesus was trying to tell us is that all of us are lost. All of us have done things that are wrong. Maybe not as bad as Zacchaeus, but we've all still done things that are wrong, and we all need to be saved. And he, Jesus, the Son of Man, what Jesus was saying about himself, wasn't he? That he is God, but also man. And he needed to be both of those things to be able to come and live a perfect life as a man, but then die on a cross to be able to take the punishment for the things that you and I have done wrong. Because only by being God could Jesus actually take our place by living that perfect life and doing that for us. And he did that so that we could become part of his family, just like Zacchaeus did. And what we need to do to know that is to turn and put our trust in him. And he said, if we do that, say we're sorry for what we've done wrong, put our trust in him, we can be forgiven and be part of his family forevermore, which is the most amazing and incredible thing that can ever, ever happen to anyone. And if you wanna know more about how you can do that, then always feel free to message us. We would love to tell you more about how you can put your trust in Jesus and become part of his family forevermore. But now it's time for us to pray. As you know, the way we always do it in Big Fish, put our hands on our shoulders like this. When I say one, you put your hands like this. When I say two, cross your arms like this. When I say three, close your eyes, bow your head. Then I'm going to pray, which is speaking to God, but also listening to what he has to say to us. And then I'm going to say amen at the end, which just means I agree. So say that along with me. And then I'll say four, and I'll be looking for you. Set up nice and straight, ready to go for the next bit of our Big Fish Kids Club as we go on to our craft. So you ready? Hands on your shoulders. Ready to go. Here we go. One. 
Oh, you have to be quicker than that. Everyone needs to be as quick as they can possibly be. Everyone ready, everyone ready. Here we go. Here we go. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. There's a bit of a cough there. Oh, just warming up, warming up. Okay, here we go. One. That was good. Two. Three. God, I thank you that you came to this earth not for people who were good and perfect, but you came for people like me, people who have messed up, people like Zacchaeus, who have done things that are wrong. You came to save us. God, I thank you that you have given us the opportunity to be part of your family by what you've done. God, I pray that you help everyone to understand what that means, to turn say they're sorry to you, put their trust in you, and that you will forgive them of the things they've done wrong and welcome them into your family forevermore. Amen. Four. Sat up nice and straight, ready to go, because now we're going to go and see what this week's craft is going to be. Hello, I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, now, we didn't feel we could leave you without a craft on the last week. So even though Becky's not about this week, I'm going to be doing a bit of craft with you this week. Now, that could mean that it will all go disastrously wrong, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be all right. So, but before we get onto our craft, we need to do our verse for this week. And like every single other one of our verses, it links into our story this week about Zacchaeus. And so our verse this week is this. Do not be shaped by this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. And that's in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And that fits with the story of Zacchaeus, isn't it? You know, don't be shaped by this world. Zacchaeus acted like all the other people in the world. Yeah, but instead of that, he learned that he shouldn't act like everyone else in the world, but instead he should be changed within by knowing Jesus. And that's just the same for us as well. So we're going to do a craft now that hopefully will help you to remember the story and actually help you to be able to tell it to other people as well. Oh, thank you very much, buddy. Mm, there we go. So, as I munch this mini cheddar, hopefully you've got your craft bits ready. You need a piece of card, you need some colouring pencils, a hole punch. That could be a two one like I've got, or a single hole punch. You need a bit of string, a bit of glue, some sellotape, and a pair of scissors. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to take our piece of card, and I want you to fold it in half, just like that by there. You're going to fold yours as well, are you? I've already done yours. Okay, so you fold it in half of that, so it looks a bit like a book, isn't it? But we're not going to use it as a book, we just, we folded it in half to know where we were going to cut, because we're going to cut it right down the middle by here, to make two A5 pieces of card. Okay. You folded up your tree, did you? There we go. Should we unfold your tree? And you can colour your tree in. Now, Elisha's given the game away a bit. We're going to be doing a tree, but you probably guessed that from the story anyway. So what we need to do, before we draw our tree though, we're going to get our hole punch. And right in the middle at the top, we're going to put a hole. There we go. And right in the middle at the bottom, we're going to put a hole. And it's important for us to do this first because of how we're going to be doing things afterwards. So let me just make sure that one's only going to be one. There we go. Excellent. So <clears throat> you don't need your hole punch anymore, so we can put that out of the way. Mine aren't really in line, but if you can get yours in line, that's even better. But what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a tree, but you need your tree to cover your two holes. You'll see why in a bit. So what we'll do is sort of draw our tree from the bottom up by here, you know, a bit of a a trunk like that, but there. Now you've got to make sure you leave a bit of room either side. You don't want it to take up the whole width of the page because we're going to be sticking some things on afterwards. And then your tree up the top of there. Now you can probably draw a better tree than me. I'm just going to draw something simple like this by here. But as you say, make sure that the tree goes right the way to the top. Can you come and sit by here, buddy, so everyone can see? Have you got your colours to colour in your tree? So you need to make sure your tree goes over the hole at the top by there so that actually you'll see why that's important in a minute but you need to make sure otherwise Zacchaeus might be floating in midair 
um, which is not really what we want because he wasn't floating in midair, he was up a tree. So once you've got your tree, I didn't do very well on the bottom end, but let me try and improve that a bit. But there, try and correct that. That's not the greatest tree I've ever drawn, but hopefully it'll be okay. Then you can colour in your tree. So. What about an apple, buddy? Is this going to be an apple tree? It can be. An, it wasn't really an apple tree, was it? It was a sycamore tree in our story. But you know, if you want to draw apples on your tree, Elisha, you can draw apples on your tree. Okay. So just colour our thing in. I'm sure you can colour it in better than I can, but we'll just do it fairly simple apple, like that. The apple, the apple, the apple. What about your apple? You want an apple, do you? Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to take a pause whilst I grab Elisha an apple. But you carry in colouring in your thing and we'll be back in a moment. There you go, we're back. So hopefully you've coloured in your tree as best as you can by there on the top and then colour in your trunk as well. So yeah, I've got a brown by here. So I'll make sure I've coloured that in. So well by there. As I said, your colouring will be much better than mine, but let's give it a bit of a go there to get our tree. So then if you put this piece of paper to one side, we're going to use our other piece of paper. Now on this piece of paper, we need to draw two people. One of them is going to be Jesus and one of them is going to be Zacchaeus. So one of them needs to be shorter than the other. Okay. But equally, Zacchaeus is going to end up going up and down our tree. So you don't want him to be too big. Otherwise, it won't be right on the tree. So have a look at your tree. Have a look at that but there and we'll draw, if I draw Jesus first, I'm going to draw a very simple kind of thing. You can probably draw something more complicated than me, but don't make it too complicated because we're going to have to cut this out as well. So I'm keeping it nice and simple so that I can cut it out. So there's going to be my Jesus. As I said, I'm sure you'll do something much better than me, but there we go. And we'll give him some eyes by there at the top. There we go, and that's a bit of hair as well. So then we said, didn't we, that the second person is going to be smaller because that's going to be Zacchaeus. So and then draw Zacchaeus down by here. I'm going to draw a smile on his face as well because he got to know Jesus, didn't he? So there we go. So make sure, buddy, make sure you're out of the way of the camera. Otherwise, people won't be able to see you. Sit in your chair. Okay. And then you can colour these in a bit. So I'm going to I'm going to do a blue for Zacchaeus. So there you go. That's right. Pick it up off the floor. You'll be okay. Pick it up quick. my Zacchaeus. As I say, you can do something much um, better than this. You can do a bit more complicated, but as I say, don't make it too complicated because you want, you're going to be cutting it out in a minute. So we don't want it too complicated. Otherwise, it'll just be really hard to cut out. Um, so here we go. Let's just do that over there. Go. So once you've done that, you need to cut them out. So if you need an adult to help you, if you're a bit younger, get an adult to help you. But remember, be very careful with the pair of scissors as well. So we're going to cut these out by here as best as we can. So here's my Jesus by here. Hello, Elisha. There we go. So, let's see, hopefully you'll have drawn yours a bit better than me, but we'll cut them out 
and make sure you remember which one's which, because Jesus is a bit taller, isn't he, than Zacchaeus. That's how we did it, because in our story, Zacchaeus was a very small man, wasn't he? So that's why he had to climb the sycamore tree, the sycamore fig tree, wasn't it, to be able to get to see Jesus. So, there we go. So, this is right here. Don't climb under the table, buddy. I don't think you guys can sort of see, but um, again, like before with Becky, there's a, t um, a shelf under this table and Elisha is trying to climb onto the shelf. The problem is the rest of my craft bits are on the shelf, so there's not much room for Elisha by there. Wait, one sec, glue. Daddy needs the glue. You're going to help Daddy by here? Here you go, here you go. You help Daddy. So what we're going to do now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick Jesus onto the thing. Right, Daddy, take the top off for you. So, there we go. So you put glue on there. on the back of Jesus, that's right. So, Daddy help you, Daddy hold that down. You put the glue on, whoa, let's not move the table, shall we? Uh, let's pull the table back so people can see. That's it, glue all over the back of there. Right, you gonna stick Jesus down for me? So he needs to go by there, okay? You stick Jesus down by there? Press down. So, so you wanna make sure you've got a good bit of glue on there, press him down nice and hard. Try not to get glue all over the table like I have, your mum or dad might tell you off for that. Um, but then, I know, we're not going to stick on there. We're going to do something different with him on there, buddy. You're going to see. It's going to be really exciting. So what we're going to do now is put your glue away. We're going to get some string. Okay. Oh, buddy, do you want to colour in your one? Where's your... See, there's your people over there. You colour those in? So get your string. There we go. Find the end of your string. Always a good thing. Now, if you turn your tree over, so you're looking at the back of your piece of card. Then... Yeah, I was just checking in my own mind that I was doing the right thing. So, you want to thread the piece of string in at the top. You're playing the drums, see? Through to the front of the piece of paper. Thread it back through the bottom, okay? And then you need to make sure you've got enough string so that you can tie it without... Um, it pulling the, when you tie a knot in it, it's not going to pull the card, so the card will still stay flat. Okay, so I think that's about right. But there, we'll sort of have a check in a minute. Whoop. So, right. So then, you want to take this. So make sure you're on the back, and you want to tie up a knot. Can you not unravel the entire ball of string, Elisha? That would be helpful to me. Okay. You unraveling somewhere? Do you? You still eating your apple? So you want to just tie a knot in the back of this by here. So there we go. Something like that. And then you can cut off a bit of the excess that's there, the, the bits that are sticking out, just to tidy it up a bit. There we go. Now, you need to then make sure your knot is right up at the top of your tree, okay? So right at the top, you need to make sure your knot is right at the top there. So hopefully you can see that on both cameras. The knot is right at the top of the tree. So with the knot right at the top of the tree, you wanna take your sellotape, and you're gonna take just a little bit of sellotape, not very much at all, um, because it's gonna be the same size as your Zacchaeus, okay? And then you wanna put the sellotape on the back of the piece of string. Okay, so the sticky side is sticking up on the string. Then you want to take your Zacchaeus and you've got to try and stick him onto your bit of string over the sellotape like that by there. And so hopefully you've got your Zacchaeus stuck on your piece of string like that, which means that when you pull it through the string, Zacchaeus will go up the tree and if you couldn't see on that one hopefully you'll be able to see on this one by here then when you pull it back down you put your knot on the back Zacchaeus will go down the tree you look at this Elisha look at Zacchaeus look at Zacchaeus by here you can look at Zacchaeus look watch watch Zacchaeus so Zacchaeus is there and then Zacchaeus climbs up the tree and then he meets Jesus Jesus asks to come to his house for tea and so then Zacchaeus goes 
down the tree. Can you try not to strangle me with a piece of string? That would be good. Now, the final thing you can do to finish things off is if you've got a bit of a gap over this side by here, the opposite side to Jesus, you can write on this week's memory verse. So I'm going to write it on by here. So it says, do not be shaped by this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. And that's in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. So there, hopefully, you've got a tree with Jesus and Zacchaeus and Zacchaeus can go up and down the tree and you've got the week's verse and also you can use this, as we said, to tell the story. You can talk about how Zacchaeus had to go and climb up the tree in order to be able to see Jesus and then when Jesus came along, Zacchaeus then was called by Jesus and there we go. My string is getting a little bit stuck. Hopefully yours is pulling better than mine. He came down out of the tree because he wanted Jesus to come to his house for tea. So there's that by there. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed Big Fish this week. I'm sorry that it's the last one before the summer holidays, but keep an eye out on our Facebook page through the summer holidays because we're going to be posting up stories each week that are going to be exciting and great. And We'll let you know as we come towards September and how things are looking, what's going on, as to whether we'll be starting back up or whether we'll be starting back up our physical big fish in church um, in different places. But we'll sort of see how things look at that time. And we'll let you know, because if we can't do it in church, we'll restart it back up here on Facebook and YouTube. But even though this is the last big fish, there's still a couple of videos that are going to come up brand new for you through the next couple of days. So we're going to have our story recap on Sunday, as always, with a couple of questions to make you think a little bit more about the story. And we'll have our memory verse recap on Monday as well. Um, and as well, as always, the worksheet is in the description below. We'll also post up a link to that tomorrow morning. So we hope you've enjoyed Big Fish. We hope you've had great fun. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. So all we've got to do now is to say goodbye. So Elisha, you're going to come and say goodbye? Come up here, buddy. Come and say goodbye to people. Oh, you're all tied up in the string, are you? There we go. Okay, right. You're going to say goodbye? Bye! Bye. We'll see you again soon. Bye.